So in the first video, we had a bit of a recap of the notation we use for inequalities. Um, we've got three more to go, uh, and this one is on uh, representing inequalities on a number line, which is basically just a way of drawing them, which makes them kind of visually visually helpful and easy to understand. Um, and it's not terribly difficult, won't take us too long to go through. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with a couple of inequalities, and we'll talk about how we'll draw them on a number line, and then we'll do the reverse. We'll look at a drawn one and figure out what the inequality is. Um, so what we have is we've got this inequality x is greater than or equal to 3. So x is just representing all the numbers that we could have, and all the numbers we could have are bigger than or the same as 3. So 3 is really our key important number. So to begin with, the first thing we'll do is highlight 3 on the number line. Um, and actually what we do is we just draw a circle above the number 3. Um, the second thing we need to do is we need to indicate, are we moving to the left or the right of that circle? Are we going up or down from here? This says x is greater than 3. Um, that means I need to go to the right. So I'm just going to draw an arrow pointing to the right, pointing at all the numbers bigger than 3. And I'm nearly finished. I've just got one final thing to sort out. Um, this includes the number 3 because we've got our little equals line as well. And we need to show that somehow on our drawing because we don't always include the number. And the way we do that is if the number is included, if we have our little equal sign, we just colour our circle in. So it's a filled in circle. So using that idea, let's have a look at uh, the second one. Uh, X is less than 10. So again, 10, 10 is our key number. So we're going to draw a circle above the number 10. I want x to be less than 10, which means I want all the numbers over here on the left, the numbers smaller than 10. And the final thing is, this doesn't include 10. We don't have our little equals line on here. And the way we show that is, we just leave the circle empty. So a filled in circle includes the number we start on. An empty circle doesn't include that number. So this looks to me like x is less than 10. So let's see if we can tackle that. If we already have the number line drawn with the uh, circle and the arrow, can we work out what's going on? So we're going to start with x, because x is just the letter we use for our number. And then I'm going to look down here, and the circle's drawn above the 5. So 5 is obviously our key value. Um, the arrow is moving to the left. That means I want numbers smaller than 5. And the final thing to notice is this circle here is filled in, it's coloured in. So that means I'm allowed to be 5 as well. We include our equals line. So this arrow represents x is less than or equal to 5. And then finally, now this one looks slightly different. Um, it's a very similar idea, but it doesn't have an arrow pointing off to as far as we want. Um, so these numbers don't go on forever. But we can tackle it in exactly the same way. We're going to start by just writing x down. And then we're going to highlight we've got the number 2 and the number 8. I've got two circles this time. So those are my key numbers. So I'm just going to jot down 2 and 8. And you can see that this line here is showing that we need to be above 2. The line of numbers for x are bigger than 2. So I can write that in. It's going to look like this. Remember that the crocodile eats the larger number, so this should say 2 is less than x. And our line is below the 8, so we can write that down as well. x is less than 8. And then the final thing we need to consider is whether the circles are filled or empty. So you can see the one above the 2 is empty, so that means we can't have 2. So I leave the first inequality symbol as it is. 2 is less than x. I'm not allowed to be equal. But the circle above the 8, that is filled in, so I'm allowed to be 8. So I can say x is less than or equal to 8. And that's how we do it. If we've just got an arrow going off forever, we've got one inequality. But if we've got two circles and then joined up in the middle, we've got two inequalities. Just in summary, this is the symbol, the notation that we're looking at. Uh, a filled in circle includes the equals line. Filled in circle 
includes the equals line. And an arrow going to the right is greater, to the right is greater, and an arrow going to the left is less, to the left is less. And these empty circles do not include, there's no equals line. So the arrow tells us whether it's a greater than or a less than, and the filled in circle or the empty circle tells us whether or not to include the equals line. And that's it. So the task I've got set for you is this. And there's actually two sheets. Um, basically, you're either given a drawing on a number line and you have to write down what the inequality is, or you're given an inequality and you have to draw what that looks like on the number line. Now the first sheet doesn't have any of those kind of sandwiched in between inequalities on it. They're either shooting off in one direction or there's a couple of them, one shooting left and one shooting right. And that looks like this, a pair of inequalities with the word or in between them. The second worksheet is these in between ones with two different things and therefore the drawings look like this and you might recognize these questions write down the integers which satisfy the inequality we tackled some of those in the first uh, video i don't think there's anything particularly difficult on there it's just a lot of drawing or reading that drawing well um, so you should be able to tackle those two worksheets now